I want to discuss his environmental legacy. Yes. For example, tell me about the UNEP. Tell me about UNEP. I yes. mean, uh, he, was, he was involved with UNEP? Yes, he was involved in UNEP. He uh. led um, an eight-man team. He was, a, he was the team leader mm. of an eight-man team that negotiated at the Stockholm Conference of 1972 for Kenya to host the United Nations Environmental Program in Kenya. Mm. And indeed, they succeeded in this. And that is why UNEP is situated in Nairobi at the moment. He led that team. It's 50 years now, and it's for us as Kenya to decide if they made the right choice in choosing Kenya as the headquarters for the UNEP. Okay. Yes. But that right. is something that yeah. definitely speaks to his legacy. Well, you know, um, um, I, think, I think UNEP has had a profound impact, not just on the, on the country, in terms of the economy of the country, mm -hmm. but it has led to many new developments coming up, you know, places like Runda and so on and so forth. So maybe uh, we owe Kaliyech quite a bit. Uh, indeed, but Kaliyech always remained humble. Yes. I believe he remains humble even in his resting place. Because he doesn't talk much about his, the role that he played. He, he gives credit to other people. Yes. But he was a team leader. He was a team leader. I want to discuss something that is, was close to his heart and something that is current. Yes. Um, there's some controversy that has emerged lately about, you know, um, somebody may have suggested that maybe Kenya should consider going back to the Shamba system. Um, what do you think was, what, what was Kaliyeche's opinion about the Shamba system? Well, um, when my father served as a Minister for Natural Resources, which had forestry under it, he propagated a different form of Shamba system different from what we were hearing being talked about currently. Because during his time, he actually pushed for farmers to grow crops, food crops, alongside uh, trees, both, both indigenous and ornamental trees, but in their private farms and not in the gazetted, not in the gazetted forest areas. So whereas we hear of this Shamba system where Kenyans are now being offered a chance to go into gazetted forest land, my father looked at it in a different way. He looked at the forests to remain protected, but to increase the forest cover in Kenya by encouraging farmers to grow trees out there the, the slow-growing indigenous trees like the podo, the cedar, alongside their crops in their private land. And how did he do this? He did this by offering free extension services of forest wardens and officers to teach the farmers how to tend to their trees in their private farms. Okay, so to be clear, um, Dr. William Odongo Mamo's approach to increasing the forest cover, or, or, or sorry, to, to the Shamba system, was that the Shamba system was within, in the farmer's own Shambas. Yes. Not in the gazetted forest. Not in the gazetted forest. So, so for him, the gazetted forests were to be left alone. The gazetted forests were to be protected. Yes. But then he no, wanted- No, no farming inside No the farming forest. inside. Yes. But then to encourage farmers to grow trees on and create farms. more forests yeah. within their farms, and the government would offer extension services to help them in tending to their trees as they grow their food crops within those farm, farms. 